Hi, my name is Shaheen. I lead ML frameworks and integrations on cloud accelerators at Google. Today, I'm going to talk about accelerating PyTorch workloads on cloud TPUs. Machine learning models and frameworks have become increasingly important in enabling foundational use cases of AI, such as generative language and generative image and video models. In order to make such systems accurate, safe, and economically viable, there are several key components that are needed. Models that are well-designed to provide high-quality and reliable results. Infrastructure that is powerful, scalable, and resilient. And finally, software that can utilize the hardware capabilities efficiently. Let's see how OpenXLA and Cloud TPUs can help PyTorch models to scale for training and inference of such models. Cloud TPUs are designed to scale cost efficiently for a wide range of AI workloads, spanning training, fine tuning, and inference. Cloud TPUs provide the versatility to accelerate workloads on leading AI frameworks, including PyTorch, JAX, and TensorFlow. Cloud TPUs offer a robust solution to train ML models across tens of thousands of chips, scaling in a fault-tolerant and reliable way that is key to many large training workflows. At the core of the software layer is the XLA compiler. Whether your workflow is in JAX or PyTorch, you can utilize the XLA compiler to achieve high performance by overlapping compute and communication when needed, and to optimize the workload execution when the compiler finds an opportunity for improvement. Finally, easy to use reference implementations and libraries and support for a wide range of model architectures means that you have the flexibility to use cloud TPUs for a variety of workflows from language models and diffusion to rankings and recommendation. Today, I want to focus on PyTorch. PyTorch XLA is a library that enables efficient use of PyTorch on XLA devices, such as cloud TPUs. With this project, we have three main goals. First, to support and grow the community of developers by providing tested code examples, best practices for performance optimizations, and engaging directly as an open source project. Second, ensuring that Google Cloud customers are able to achieve performance while getting interoperability between GPUs and TPUs. As a customer, you will always have a choice to use the best solution available to you. And finally, ensuring that a strong ecosystem of third-party products and libraries such as Hugging Face and PyTorch Lightning are available on Cloud TPUs. So how does PyTorch XLA work? PyTorch XLA provides a backend for Torch Dynamo. The flexible architecture of PyTorch 2 allows various backends, such as Inductor and XLA, to provide compilation capabilities for a PyTorch workload. This means that with minimal code change, you can utilize different backends, which may have different characteristics in how they compile and execute your model. By utilizing the OpenXLA backend, PyTorch ops are converted to corresponding stable HLO ops. Stable HLO works as a portability layer between different ML frameworks and ML compilers. Once the model is in stable HLO, you get all the benefits of using the XLA compiler for distribution and fusing ops for better performance. Finally, PJRT, which is the same runtime that can be used for JAX, can be used for running your PyTorch model. Now, let's talk about performance. Training large language models would benefit from high model flops utilization. MFU is the ratio of the observed performance to the theoretical maximum performance if the benchmarked hardware setup were operating at peak flops with no memory or communication overhead. The higher utilization means that you are able to better take advantage of the hardware. In this case, training Llama 2 
at different parameter sizes of 7 billion, 13 billion, and 70 billion on Cloud TPU v5P can achieve up to 56% MFU. Once the model is trained and for inference, you can use the recently introduced Jetstream, which is an efficient inference solution on cloud TPUs, to get up to 3,930 tokens per second while serving a Llama 2 with 13 billion parameters on TPU v5e8. Now, let's talk about the developer experience. It is important to ensure that as a developer, you would have the least amount of work needed to adapt your workloads to take advantage of cloud TPUs. Next, we will look into a few examples. This is a sample code for fine-tuning Gemma using PyTorch on GPUs. Gemma is a family of lightweight, state-of-the-art open models from Google. You define tokenizer, model, and LoRa config, load a dataset, and then use the supervised fine-tuning trainer to fine-tune Gemma on your dataset. Here are the changes needed to run that code on TPUs. First, you need to add an import statement for PyTorch XLA. Second, you need to replace the CUDA device with an XLA device. And finally, you need to provide the XLA FSDP config and use XLA FSDP v2 and gradient checkpointing. XLA FSDP is an efficient implementation of fully sharded data parallel algorithm. The rest stays the same. You define tokenizer, model, and LoRa config, load a dataset, and then use the supervised fine-tuning trainer to fine-tune Gemma on your dataset. This time, your code can run on cloud TPUs. On a TPU v5P8, you can achieve 71% MFU for the 2 billion parameter model and 64% MFU for the 7 billion parameter model. Perhaps one of the most important capabilities of the XLA stack is the ability to scale distributed workloads efficiently. GSPMD is an automatic parallelization system for ML workloads. The XLA compiler transforms a single device program into a partitioned one with proper collectives based on the user-provided sharding hints. This allows developers to write PyTorch programs as if they are on a single large device without any custom sharded computation and or collective communications to scale models. PyTorch XLA SPMD allows PyTorch users to parallelize their ML workloads with GSPMD with less effort and with better performance via the Tensor API. Knowing the best sharding strategy for your workload could be challenging, which is why we have introduced an auto sharding API. Using the same DTensor API in PyTorch 2, you can provide an auto policy configuration that tells the compiler to find a sharding strategy that is most likely to achieve good results for your workload distribution with this PMD. As an example, manually specifying an optimum sharding strategy for a Gemma model on TPU v4 can get up to 56% MFU. This means the developer has manually tried to tune and optimize the sharding annotations to get better performance, while simply using an auto sharding feature can give up to 55% MFU for the same model. As a developer or an ML engineer, you may find yourself needing to use a custom kernel. Either you have an idea that you want to rapidly implement or you want to use an existing custom kernel such as flash attention. PyTorch XLA provides an API to use custom kernels written in Palace. Palace enables writing custom kernels for GPU and TPU for both JAX and PyTorch XLA. Therefore, the same custom kernels that can power your JAX models are available for you to run in PyTorch. As an example, using the flash attention custom kernel, you can improve your step time by more than 2x. Finally, PyTorch XLA provides an API to export and save your model into StableHLO. The resulting StableHLO can be used for inference on a device such as Android or on a server. 
I hope that these features can enable you with your journey to accelerate your PyTorch workloads on cloud TPUs. Please join us on GitHub, where PyTorch XLA is developed, and try cloud TPUs for your next PyTorch project. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.